If you saw my first DIY Ultimate Cold Plunge video, you'll notice an interesting improvement. I've added plumbing to the bottom of my freezer floor. This is a much nicer setup and it's a lot easier on the pump. By the way, these are color chips that I added to the pond shield paint in my cold plunge. I've had comments from people who thought they were mold. This project has been a bit of an experiment and I'm trying to test out different ideas. Pick and choose the ones that you like best. So here's how I added plumbing with ozone through the bottom of my freezer. You'll need to order a couple extra long through hole connectors. Check the video description for a link to order them. I cut mine down a little so they don't extend so far out of the bottom of my freezer. This isn't necessary and it will weaken the connection a little, but it worked fine for me. You'll also need a 1 inch Forstner bit or hole saw. Before you drill any holes in your freezer, make sure you know where the coolant lines are. You can look for a schematic diagram of your freezer, or check online for resources to help you locate coolant lines. It's a common issue when building a kegerator, or you can borrow a thermal imaging camera. You can see the heat signature of the coolant lines on the upper walls of my freezer. The bottom looks clear and an inside view also confirms that there are no coolant lines in the floor, so I should be good to go. You'll be drilling two holes. The input hole and the drain hole should be on opposite sides to encourage water circulation. You won't need a very powerful drill, but you'll be going pretty deep, so make sure your drill bit is long enough. I had the drill almost three inches deep. Put a nice bead of Sikaflex nautical sealant around the flange and wear gloves. It's really sticky. Push the through hole firmly into place. You should have extra sealant squishing out. Wipe it off with paper towels. Don't use solvent on the sealant. No worries if it's not perfect. Now gently tighten the nut. You don't need to use a lot of force here. and repeat this process with the hole on the other side of the cold plunge. Allow the sealant to fully dry according to the manufacturer's directions. Attach a water hose to each through hole. You can soften up the tip of the hose in hot water if it won't stretch. Then secure it with a hose clamp. Be careful not to pinch the hose by bending it too quickly like this. You can keep a gradual bend in the tubing by raising the cold plunge higher off the floor. I sit mine on 2x4s. Here's a simple hack to keep the hose from collapsing around a bend. Take a scrap piece of PVC pipe, cut a series of partial slits. Now you can bend the PVC into a supportive arch. Then hold it into place with a hose clamp. Here's another look inside. There's the drain, and there's where the water enters with the ozone. Check the video description for a diagram to hook up your pump and ozone generator. Basically, the pump pushes water out, ozone is added, and it comes into the cold plunge. The water circulates and heads back to the pump where it is filtered. You can also split the return hose and add a drain line with a valve. Then just open the valve to drain your cold plunge. I have mine set up this way. And that's the setup. Check out my first DIY Ultimate Cold Plunge video to learn more about how I purchased the freezer, the pump, and the ozone generator. I'll also be posting another video soon to answer questions about the pallet wood decking, the sauna, and tips to create your own room like this. For more information about healthy mindful practices, please subscribe to Hands-On Meditation and share this channel with others.